Hello and welcome back to my blog. Still working on the voice. I took put some peppermint oil on the back of my tongue and the voice is returning, but still it's not quite there. I love my porch swing. This was a Father's Day present a number of years ago. And I just love to sit in it. So anyway, we're almost done. The, the penultimate part of Flatland, um, 35. Section 22, how I then tried to diffuse the theory of three dimensions by other means and of the result, part one. You'll remember the first means was to his own grandson, and that fell right flat on its face. My failure with my grandson did not encourage me to communicate my secret to others of my household, yet neither was I led by it to despair of success. Only I saw that I must not wholly rely on the catchphrase upward, not northward, but must rather endeavor to seek a demonstration by setting before the public a clear view of the whole subject, and for this purpose it seemed necessary to resort to writing. So I devoted several months in privacy to the composition of a treatise on the mysteries of three dimensions. Only with the view of evading the law, if possible, I spoke not of a physical dimension, but of a thought land, whence, in theory, a figure could look down upon flat land and see simultaneously the insides of all things, and where it was possible that there might be supposed to exist a figure environed, as it were, with six squares and containing eight terminal points. But in writing this book, I found myself sadly hampered by the impossibility of drawing such diagrams as were necessary for my purpose. For, of course, in our country of Flatland, there are no tablets but lines, and no diagrams but lines, all in one straight line, and only distinguishable by difference of size and brightness. So that, when I had finished my treatise, which I entitled Through Flatland to Thoughtland, I could not feel certain that many would understand my meaning. <clears throat> Meanwhile, my life was under a cloud. All pleasures palled upon me, all sights tantalized and tempted me to outspoken treason, because I could not but compare what I saw in two dimensions with what it really was of seen in three, and could hardly refrain from making my comparisons aloud. I neglected my clients and my own business to give myself to the contemplation of the mysteries which I had once beheld, yet which I could impart to no one, and found daily more difficult to reproduce even before my own mental vision. One day, about 11 months after my return from Spaceland, I tried to see a cube with my eyes closed, but failed. And though I succeeded afterwards, I was not then quite certain, nor have I been ever afterwards, that I had exactly realized the original. This made me more melancholy than before, and determined me to take some step, yet what I knew not. I felt that I would have been willing to sacrifice my life for the cause, if thereby I could have produced conviction. But if I could not convince my grandson, how could I convince the highest and most developed circles in the land? And yet at times my spirit was too strong for me, and I gave vent to dangerous utterances. Already I was considered heterodox, if not treasonable, and I was keenly alive to the danger of my position. Nevertheless, I could not, at times, refrain from bursting out into suspicious or half-seditious utterances, even among the highest polygonal and circular society. When, for example, the question arose about the treatment of those lunatics who said that they had received the power of seeing the insides of things, I would quote the saying of an ancient circle, who declared that prophets and inspired people are always considered by the majority to be mad. And... I could not help occasionally dropping such expressions as the eye that discerns the interiors of things and the all-seeing land. Once or twice, I even let fall the forbidden terms the third and fourth dimensions. At last, to complete a series of minor indiscretions, at a meeting of our local speculative society held at the palace of the prefect himself, some extremely silly person having read an elaborate paper exhibiting the precise reasons why providence has limited the number of dimensions to two and why the attribute of omnividence is assigned to the supreme alone, I so far forgot myself as to give an exact account of the whole of my voyage with the sphere into space and to the assembly hall in our metropolis and then to space again 
and of my return home, and of everything that I had seen and heard, in fact, or vision. At first, indeed, I pretended that I was descri describing the imaginary experiences of a fictitious person, but my enthusiasm soon forced me to throw off all disguise, and finally, in a fervent peroration, I exhorted all my hearers to divest themselves of prejudice and to become believers in the third dimension. Need I say that I was at once arrested and taken before the council? I don't suppose he need, but he did because there is government in Flatland, and as all governments are, oppressive of any outside-the-box-ish thinking. Not the best term for it, but that's it. So anyway, tomorrow we conclude Flatland. Then what will I be doing? Who knows? Make it a great day, and bye for now.